Good evening. Welcome everyone to the September 1st, 2021 City of Murfreesboro Planning Commission meeting. We'll call the meeting to order and we do have a quorum present tonight. Uh, first item of business is to approve the minutes of the August 4th, 2021 Planning Commission meeting. Any additions or corrections to those minutes? If not, we'll just take a motion to approve. Move for approval. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor, please state aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Then we have our public hearings and recommendations to City Council. We have four items tonight. The first item is an annexation petition and plan of services for approximately 9.1 acres located along Franklin Road and Veterans Parkway. Wright Family Real Estate Partnership is the applicant. Ms. Rush, good evening. Good evening, Chair Jones Commission. Um, the Wright Family Real Estate Partnership is, has submitted a petition requesting to annex their property into the city of Murfreesboro. As indicated, the property is 9.1 acres in size. It's located along the west side of Veterans Parkway and along the north side of Franklin Road. Um, currently, the property is vacant. There is uh, no structures on the site. The study area is located within the city of Murfreesboro urban growth boundary, and it's contiguous to the city limits as seen on the map to the east and to the south. Uh, staff has prepared a plan of services for the proposed annexation, which was attached to the staff report for reference. Uh, city services can be provided to the property upon annexation and for future development of the property. It should be noted that in the plan of services, the, um, the school had responded that the overall Creek Elementary School, which is the district this would serve, is currently at capacity. And while the annexation of the undeveloped property is in, in its present state does not have any impact on the school because it's vacant, the proposed future development for residential would have a minimal impact, generating approximately eight to 17 students at full build out. Um, this is a small enough number that the school could accommodate those additional students. In addition to the annexation, there's also an accompanying zoning request for the property, um, which it includes commercial along the Veterans Parkway um, property line and planned residential district for townhomes of 49 units along the remainder. Uh, planning Commission will need to conduct a public hearing on this annexation and plan of services and then discuss the matter and formulate a recommendation to the City Council. Thank you. Hey, thank you. Any questions? No, Go I ahead. I need to make a comment. Uh, although this says Wright Family Real Estate, this has no association with me or my family. Okay. So this is not anybody associated with me. Perfect. Nice clarification. Thank you there. Appreciate it, Sean. All right. Any other comments or questions before we open the public hearing? If not, uh, we will uh, start our public hearings tonight. And as always, we'll invite anybody to come forward that would like to speak on any of the items. Uh, come forward to the podium, state your name and address, and uh, please limit your comments to three minutes or less and make all of your comments directly to the Planning Commission and not to other members of the audience and or the developers. Um, so with that being said, we will uh, open the public hearing for this first item, the annexation petition and plan of services along Franklin Road and Veterans Parkway. Anybody would like to speak, they may come forward at this time. And seeing no one, we'll close the public hearing. Are there other questions or comments from the Planning Commission? If there are none, I'll move for approval subject to all staff comments. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, please state aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Our next item is a uh, companion to that first item and it is a zoning application for approximately 9.1 acres located along Franklin Road and Veterans Parkway to be zoned CH and PRD, the villas at Veterans PRD, simultaneous with annexation. Harney Homes LLC is the applicant. Ms. Rush. Thank you. Um, is, in, is indicated that this is the a companion zoning application 
for that annexation that was just uh, reviewed and recommended for approval. The applicant is requesting to zone the subject property to plan residential district called the Villas at Veterans. So it's Villa is at Veterans PRD, as well as commercial highway um, along the, the eastern portion of the property. The plan development is in order to allow 49 residential units. These would be attached units or townhomes. Um, and they would have um, entrances coming off of both Veterans and Franklin Road. Uh, at Veterans, there is a signalized intersection there um, that they would have lights to be able to, to make those left turn lanes. The density of the, of the project of the 49 units is 6.89 dwelling units per acre based upon the 7.3 acres of the property that would be um, for the residential portion. It would be set up as a horizontal property regime for, with each unit being for sale. They would have um, garages for the units. There are two car garages as well as one car garages, as well as parking in the driveways. There's also guest parking uh, located in the development. The townhomes would be constructed of masonry materials. From the elevations, they're primarily, it's brick on the front that's painted and fiber cement board on the, the back and the rears. Um, each townhome would have foundation landscaping along all the fronts and sod. Uh, the proposed roads in this development are public. There's a 42-foot wide, um, wide right-of-way that would bisect the, the property and then also include a stub to the west. There's also a, a short private street that's proposed for a 38-foot wide section, um, approximately, I think it's 90 linear feet, that serves one of the um, buildings that has five units in it. Um, the open space in the amenities that they're proposing, um, approximately 50% of the site will be in open space. Um, the amenities are pavilion, playground, dog park, as well as the guest parking mentioned earlier. Um, these will be installed at approximately 50% of when the homes are constructed at that level. Solid waste would be handled by individual trash carts that are stored inside the garages. Uh, a private hauler would be picking those up weekly um, to provide service for those residents. Exceptions requested are for setbacks. Um, the rear setback is typically with an RSA2 zoning district, which is our zoning district for townhomes, requires a rear setback of 20 feet and the plan development is asking for a rear setback of 10 feet due to the, the width of the property. Adjacent zoning and land uses uh, to the north and west is RM, which is medium residential in the county, unincorporated portion. To the east is CH, and further to the east um, is also CH. So the Kroger Shopping Center is further to the east. There were two site plans recently approved for the property that's contiguous to the east. I believe the commission, although I wasn't here, um, had requested uh, to be able to see the layouts of those approved site plans relative to this project, and the information was added to the site plan that's in the program book. The future land use map um, shows that this would be uh, auto urban, um, I'm sorry, yeah, general commercial auto urban. So with general commercial, obviously the residential is not a consistent use. So um, they are proposing a rezoning. If the rezoning is something that is supported, staff would revise the land use map to reflect the auto urban residential for this property. We have experienced in the last year or so with the really deep commercial zone properties, the challenges and difficulty of, of having those um, develop with commercial, since a lot of the large big boxes are really not developing. So um, staff felt like we could support this rezoning because it does still provide for the commercial along veterans while allowing for uh, residential development to occur behind it. Staff supports the rezoning to PRD and CH for the following reasons. The proposed road connection to veterans along the eastern portion of the property is at a signalized intersection. Uh, they are proposing public roads that will provide new connections from veterans all the way through to Franklin Road. Uh, the second reason is the portion of the property proposed for CH zoning is consistent with the general commercial land use designation 
and as I indicated, is something that staff supported and, and desired for along Veterans Parkway. The portion of the property proposed for PRD is not consistent. However, in this case, the proposed townhome development would provide a good transition between the commercial property to the um, east and future detached residential property that may develop in the future to the west. Um, staff recommends that this would be an appropriate instance to deviate from the recommendation of the future land use map. And then lastly, the proposed zoning to PRD would allow for new housing units to be developed at a density of less than seven dwelling units to the acre. The sanitary sewer allocation ordinance caps townhome developments at a maximum of seven um, per acre for property zoned for townhomes. So while the property currently does not have a sanitary sewer entitlement to the seven dwelling units as presently zoned, it's not for townhomes. The proposed density does not exceed the maximum allowed under the sewer um, allocation ordinance. So as such, uh, the Planning Commission action would need to conduct a public hearing on this zoning request discuss the matter and formulate a recommendation to the City Council. So there's a lot of information. I'm happy to answer any questions from the Commission about this project. The applicant is here as well tonight uh, to present his um, information on the pattern book and can also answer any questions. Okay. Any questions for Ms. Rush before we... Are, are we going to have a presentation, Mr. Taylor? Okay. All right. Any questions? Okay. <coughs> Thank you, Ms. Rush. All right. Mr. Taylor, welcome. Thank you, Chair Lady Jones, uh, members of the Planning Commission. I'm Matt Taylor from SEC. And uh, I'm accompanied tonight by Mr. Justin Harney of Harney Homes, the applicant on the project, as well as Mr. John Harney from the Parks Group here in town. So we're here tonight to present to you the bill as it veterans, uh, as Ms. Rush has already introduced. Uh, the site is about just over nine acres in size at the northwest quadrant of the intersection of 96 and Veterans Parkway. Today it is a mix of uh, crops and pasture. As Ms. Rush mentioned a minute ago, uh, properties to the east of the site are already in the city and zone commercial. Uh, everything to the west and north is still in the unincorporated areas as well as our property is uh, currently zoned RM inside the county. This is looking from veterans. Uh, Kroger would be to the back and left of this picture. Uh, this would be the signal that we would create the fourth leg with this project. And so this is looking straight ahead onto the property. This is from Highway 96. This is looking across veterans at one of the commercial developments there. I think that's a vet clinic. And this is more uh, commercial properties on the east side of Veterans Parkway. Uh, the property itself and the request uh, is for us to zone approximately 1.8 acres to the commercial highway along the frontage of Veterans Parkway and then the remainder of the property would be zoned to PRD zoning to allow for 49 townhome dwellings. That would create a density of just under 6.9 units to the acre. Uh, we propose for everything here to be uh, all, all underground utilities, um, nearly four acres of open space uh, inside of this development, and as Ms. Rush said, all public streets, with the exception of the area right around the uh, little park setting. All of our townhomes will be conveyed through a horizontal property regime. Uh, every homeowner here would be a member of an HOA, which would be managed by a third-party association. That association would take care of uh, all exterior maintenance of the common areas and enforce all the bylaws and collect dues. We propose landscape buffers around the entire perimeter of the site and all of our streets will have sidewalks along both sides. Townhomes, we work very closely with staff uh, to uh, improve an already good townhome elevation we thought to uh, be better. And um, with this, you'll see all the building materials are masonry. Uh, the only trim, only vinyl will be in the trim and soffit areas. Uh, all these are two-story homes. They start at a minimum of 1,350 square feet, and all of our townhomes have garages. Here's uh, renderings of the front and the rear. Uh, you'll see that we alternate materials and colors between each unit. We've got a lot of variation in the front wall plane, a lot of variation in the roof line and decorative garage doors 
and covered front porches uh, and varying between metal roof on those porches as well as asphalt shingles. Uh, amenities, uh, we've tried to start with our entrances. So we planned entry signs at both entrances to the neighborhood to try to create that sense of community and neighborhood. Um, in addition, we've also planned for some horse rail fence along Highway 96 to mimic some of the other existing neighborhoods in the area. And then as Ms. Green, or Ms. I'm sorry, uh, Ms. Rush said, uh, we've created kind of a mini park in our northwest corner of our property with a pavilion, a playground, and a dog park. We've intentionally located that dog park away from the townhouses themselves. Uh, due to the sensitivity we've heard that you had on that sen on that issue in the past. And of course, all these will be very easily accessible due to the relatively small scale of the development and the sidewalks we've got planned. Uh, we do have two primary points of access. Uh, one of those will be from the signal on Veterans Parkway that we'll complete. And then the other will be from the access on Highway 96. That access on the Highway 96 will have uh, turn lane improvements with that connection as well and then we've also planned for one stub to the west to allow for access from future development back to that signal at Kroger and Veterans and then we've planned for buffering uh, type C which is a 12 foot wide um, evergreen buffering along the north and west sides of this property and then on the east side we'll plant a type A buffer against the existing commercial and of course, our commercial that we got proposed, whenever that develops, they would have their own buffer that would be planted against us. In addition, the um, two site plans that are already planned and approved along veterans that are commercial, though they will have their own type C buffers against our property. So it will have um, double buffering there if you, if you want to call it that. So I'll be happy to answer any questions now or after the hearing that you might have. Any questions for Mr. Tyler? Okay, thank you, Mr. Taylor, appreciate it. All right, we will open the public hearing for the zoning application on this property. Ask anybody to come forward that would like to speak on this item. And seeing no one, we will close the public hearing. Any questions or comments on this item? If there are none, I'll make a motion we approve, subject to all staff comments. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor, please state aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Thank you very much. Our next item is a zoning application to amend the PRD zoning at Shelton Square PRD on approximately 242 acres located along Blackman Road. Shelton Square LLC is the applicant. Ms. Rush. Okay. Thank you all for your patience. Sure. <laughs> There's got to be a better way to do this, right? Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, this, um, this item before you, 4C, is to make an amendment to the program book for Shelton Square, PRD. Um, it is located on, on approximately 242 acres along the east side of Blackman Road to the south of Heatherwood subdivision and west of Florence Road, which is just north of 840. Uh, the development um, is requesting to amend the PRD in order to modify the type of lot sizes for sale on the remaining balance. So due to what they've experienced uh, through the marketing of this subdivision, um, they were asking if they could modify the combination of what lots would be for sale. So reducing some and increasing others 
So there's a net a difference of zero, so it's um, completely the same number of units. So uh, what they're asking for is on the 3,500 square foot lots, which are called the cottages, to add an additional 69 of those units, and then there would be a reduction to the villages, the sanctuary, and the retreats um, of the numbers that are listed in the table that's in your staff report. Uh, they're also proposing to increase the, the estate lots, which are the 10,000 square foot lots, for an additional 28. So in, as I indicated, the number does not change. It was originally approved for 771 units and remains at 771 units. Um, in addition to the, the lot combination, uh, the applicant is also, over time, has installed a, a variety of amenities that were not um, reflected in the program book. These are additional, and I wanted to update the program book to reflect those so that those are protected in the future. And so those changes included um, revisions to the entrances. They have like um, now, so I think they're monumental features out there, so some architectural elements. There was also uh, an additional playground, um, dog park, half soccer field, and a pocket park with a bocce ball court. And so those are now listed on pages 3 and 18 of the program book for um, those revisions. All other elements and development standards from the original program book do remain the same, so there are no other changes other than the ones I've noted. Um, so relative to the adjacent land uses and zoning, on the north and west are the single family homes in the county, and to the east is vacant land, which is all zoned RM residential in the county. And to the east along the west side of Florence Road is the Shelton Crossing um, planned residential district, which is developing townhome community located within the city limits. And to the south of the property is Interstate 840. The future land use map indicated that general residential was the appropriate land use designation, and the PRD is consistent with that land use designation. So staff recommends supporting the rezoning request um, for the following reasons. The zoning amendment does not increase the total number of lots in the subdivision, so it was approved for 771 and will remain at 771 lots. The zoning amendment will increase the amount of open space by six, from 6% 6 uh, to 16%. The zoning amendment will document amenities that have been constructed but were not in the program book. As I indicated, was the playground, dog park, half soccer field, and pocket park with bocce ball. And lastly, the zoning amendment is consistent with the future land use map for auto urban general residential as recommended. So the staff is recommending that the Planning Commission conduct a public hearing on this zoning request and after which discuss the matter and formulate a recommendation to the City Council. Happy to answer any questions and the applicant's representative is here as well to answer any questions and make a short presentation. Okay. Any questions for Ms. Rush before we... Is the bocce ball in replace of the basketball court or in addition to the basketball court? I'll have to let uh, Matt Taylor respond to that one. Thank you, Ms. Rush. Uh, I'll go ahead and answer that. It's in addition to. Um, thank you again, Councilman Jones, Councilperson, Chairperson Jones. Yes. <laughs> Trying to give you a uh, Let's clarify that. Motion, I believe. <laughs> uh, Don't want that other title. Thank you. <laughs> uh, Matt Taylor of SEC. Uh, I am accompanied tonight by Mr. Phil Dodd of uh, Parks Development the applicant on the project and we did want to present to you uh, the Shelton Square PRD amendment request. I think most of you were on the uh, Planning Commission back in 2015 and 16 when this original application came through. As Ms. Rush said, we zoned it as a PRD then for 771 homes on just under 242 acres. Uh, none of that has changed with this application. Um, that original application had those uh, homes spread across five lot sizes and home types, that is still consistent. So we're really just shuffling around um, where those lots are and how they're distributed. So all the quality that we had proposed originally is still there or has been increased and we've made further commitments inside this book. So uh, we hope you agree. The, really the bulk of the uh, request can be summarized in this table here. Uh, we have um, increased the number of cottages, which is the 35-foot wide lots. 
uh, from the previous 36 up to 105, so it's an increase of 69. The villages, which are in the brown, they were a 50 or 51 foot wide lot. Um, we lost, I think, four on that. And then the sanctuary, shown in the darker brown, uh, they were also, I think they were a 52 foot wide lot. We lost four there. The retreat, which was a 65 foot wide lot, 8,000 square feet. Um, there we uh, decreased those by 88. And then the largest, the estate lots, um, we increased those by 28. So what we really found was that we were heavy on the 8,000 uh, square foot lots and we were uh, light on the large lots, the estates, uh, as well as the cottages. And so we've taken that and kind of reshuffled that. Uh, at the same time, we've managed to add about 14 more acres of open space. Uh, we, we increased that at the rear uh, on the eastern side of the property as well as we made our passive park that was in the center of the development larger uh, both um, with this request so we still have five lot sizes still have 771 homes and still have all underground utilities and an all detached proposal so the cottage homes these are the alley loaded 35 foot wide uh, they were originally in the only in the northwest corner. Those have sold extremely well. They've been very attractive, very popular uh, offering in the neighborhood. And so we've brought those into the center of the development where nobody else is currently living around and uh, centered those around the primary north-south street to create a nice streetscape there as well as focused those uh, fronts along the central park area to again to create a nice streetscape. Uh, area in that location as well so none of these um, requirements or standards have changed that I, I'm showing you here uh, still a minimum of 1800 square feet in size the setbacks are still the same it's still a mixture of one and two story homes uh, same materials uh, there's very limited vinyl uh, again only in the trim and soffit areas Here's a picture of, of the homes themselves. This is on our northern entrance off of Blackman Road, so Shelton Boulevard. A nice little bird's eye uh, capture here. Looking back, there's several more homes built on the back side of this now, so this does have a little bit of age on it. And this is an example of, uh, I guess you'd call that a one and a half story home, I think. The villages, this area is uh, largely unchanged, just a decrease of four lots. Um, it was one of the first sections to start, and so most of these homes are built. Uh, we have about 40, I think, we're still working on the road zone, and then they've got about another 20 or so that they're building the houses on. So this, this portion of the development is almost completely built out. All the materials inside of Shelton Square are consistent. No vinyl anywhere, so I won't belabor you with repeating that. Uh, this is some examples of uh, what we've built on the ground uh, in, in this portion of the development. So very attractive homes. The sanctuary. Sanctuary is really just now getting started on home building. The roads have been in place for, I would say, about the last eight to ten months. Uh, they are just now getting started on some model homes. And so I don't have any real life pictures to show you, but I do have some uh, nice renderings from the artist. So you can see a lot of interest uh, in that um, roof line, that front elevation, so a very attractive home. Uh, these have already seen a lot of interest and we don't even really have a real house for sale out here, so excited about that. Again, this the number here stayed largely the same. I think we had about four, uh, a four unit decrease there. The retreat homes, this was the largest swing of any uh, where we decreased 88 of these. Um, again, the location of these stayed basically the same. Um, as you see here, we just took out a few in the southeast corner and added more estates and then took out a few in the central part of the neighborhood and added the cottages. A couple of examples of these that are on the ground today. And then the estate homes, the largest houses, all these are custom homes. Um, again, these uh, have increased by about 28 on the lot count. Very nice homes, very expensive homes. Here's a couple of examples of these and are very popular and are selling very well. 
uh, the um, amenities, as Ms. Rush said, we've only increased amenities. Um, we have either already built some of these in addition to what we'd already um, committed to in the previous PRD, or we have um, committed to further inside of this book. So we've already built our pool and the bathhouse. Uh, we also are in the planning stages uh, and very soon permitting stages of what we're calling a manor house, which is much more of a formal clubhouse gathering area. Uh, we have not seen many of those built uh, recently, so that's a nice addition to the development. Uh, we did, we've already built a basketball court, a dog park, and playground. We, uh, we are currently waiting on the basketball goal to arrive so that we can install that. We've also beefed up our entry features, um, built what I would call guard towers at our main entrance off of Blackman Road at Shelton Boulevard. We are in the process of installing a wet pond along that same roadway to create some ambiance as you come in. And then um, the larger green area in the central part of the development will have bocce ball and some unimproved areas just for leisure or passive recreation. Now we've kept our same commitment to the uh, berm and landscaping all along Blackman Road here as well. Some of which is already installed, some of it will get installed with the sanctuary. Access points are still consistent with the original approval. We have one off of Florence and then two off of Blackman. All of these are installed today. All of these have their turn lanes installed as well. And then we have our two stubs, one to the north, one to the south. These are again consistent with the previous approval and, have, are, in, and are unchanged. And then um, questions. Uh, we did send out mail through the HOA to every homeowner inside of Shelton Square. Uh, they also, uh, the HOA also did a push across their social media pages um, with a letter inviting them to reach out to myself uh, if there was any questions about the application. I had exactly one phone call from one resident asking about the timing of the basketball goal. Um, and then um, I think at the Planning Commission workshop there was a question about you know, while we're changing out uh, some of the lots for the smaller lots, uh, I ex explained then uh, with just some anecdotal evidence and thoughts that uh, those were not cheap homes. They were very expensive homes, very desirable homes. They were just on a smaller lot for a different clientele. Uh, since the workshop, my client has gathered all the average sales prices uh, for each different product type uh, inside of Shelton Square. And so, and then we've did a total value between original plan and new plan. This plan increased the total value of the neighborhood by about $30 million. So it is it very much a increase and a um, add value to the, to the overall development. So I'll be happy to answer any questions now or after the hearing. Okay, thank you, Mr. Taylor. Any questions for Mr. Taylor before we open the public hearing? Okay. We'll open the public hearing and ask if there is anybody that would like to come forward to speak on this item. Zoning application to amend Shelton Square PRD. And seeing no one, we'll close the public hearing. And Chairman Jones, just want to make a comment. Sir. Uh, our daughter lives in this neighborhood, so I'll be abstaining from voting or discussion. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Halliburton. Any other questions or comments on this item from the Planning Commission? Mr. Taylor, you had mentioned, <clears throat> you had mentioned the price study. What is the average price for these 35-foot lot home, completed homes compared to the average price of the ones that we cut? So from the inception, which was roughly June of 19 till the beginning, so April, or sorry, August 3rd of this year, we just pulled it across all of them. And so the smaller lots, the average sales price was about 395. The 51 foot lots or the villages was at about 340. The uh, 65 foot lots, the retreats about 448, and then the uh, estate lots are around 630. The sanctuary, the 52 foot lots, uh, those do not have any 
closings yet because we're just now doing the models. They've got some pre-sales that uh, are around 600. And um, I think that if we did a capture of just since January of this year, I think those averages would look much higher, probably 30% higher from what I'm told. So these 35 foot lots aren't gonna hurt the average sales price of the overall neighborhood? No, sir. I, I had gotten several calls about that. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Wright. Any other questions or concerns, comments from the Planning Commission? I think it looks like very nice changes and, and definitely uh, uh, be all the amenity changes and upgrades. Just very nice subdivision. I'm pleased. No other questions. We're ready for a motion. I'll make a, I'll make a motion that we approve, subject to all staff comments. I'll second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, please state aye. 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 Any opposed? And one abstention. Okay. Thank you all very much. Our next item, item D, is a zoning application for approximately 0 0.24 acres. <laughs> located along North Maple Street to be rezoned from RM12 and CCO to PRD. It'll be 604 North Maple Towns and CCO. Uh, Green Properties LLC is the applicant. Ms. Smith, good evening. Good evening, Chair Jones and Commission. Uh, this evening we've scheduled a public hearing for the uh, Maple North Maple Towns PRD. The uh, location of the property is on the corner of West Chestnut Street and North Maple Street on the corner. Uh, the current general plan designation for this property is general residential zone, um, general plan designation. This particular designation does allow for townhomes and generally would look at 3.54 to 8.64 dwelling units per acre. Um, it's consistent as far as the townhome type of a product, but the 20.8 dwelling units per acre is not consistent with the general plan designation, which the Planning Commission would need to determine whether or not it's appropriate in this instance. Uh, the proposed uh, PRD, the zoning around the property currently is RM12, and the existing house Two houses on site contain, I believe, three units in one dwelling and two units in the back dwelling that's on site. Uh, but the surrounding properties is OGR across the street where there is a uh, commercial business at this location currently and the other sites are predominantly residential. Since the last time we met on this project, uh, we did get some updates uh, that I would did want to mention is one the applicant in looking at and uh, our average height requirements in our current zoning code, you'll notice there are two other exceptions that are written down as number four and five, um, which I believe the applicant will go through uh, in his presentation, uh, but they were added for clarity purposes to allow for a cornice on one building and a stairwell above the maximum height requirements that are is currently in our CCO uh, district. Uh, and I do understand that open space, formal open space, uh, some folks did have a little bit of confusion between where the formal open space was being provided on this site. So I just wanted to point out the two sections. One is this back area that's a fenced uh, dog park with a seating area. And then in this front, this area that kind of looks like a building is actually not a building. It's the other open space area that has formal seating, a pony wall that actually separates it from the uh, street side uh, for the properties in place. Um, what we did include in your packet is there were some questions about an adjacent uh, townhome development. We did provide that for you in a tabular form, so any questions that you may have on those specifics uh, would be more easily accessible. Uh, and in looking at this particular project, the staff is actually supporting the rezoning request, uh, including the deviation from the future lot, 
land use map for the following reasons. One, it meets the CCO purpose of promoting reinvestment in downtown and surrounding neighborhoods, which contribute to vitality and quality of life in downtown. Two, the compact dense development is desirable in and around downtown and promotes walkability. So this is just outside our North Highlands area, but due north of downtown by a few blocks where we do see some transitioning occurring. Uh, number three, the common design elements from adjoining developments are incorporated, respecting the scale, massing, and materials as stated in the design guidelines. From a composition rhythm standards and the street facing building entrances have the appropriate prominence uh, as would be required in the design guidelines. So the um, applicant uh, representative is here to make a formal presentation this evening and I will get his PowerPoint up. And if you have any uh, questions for staff, I believe he also uh, would like to make a request of the commission this evening. Any questions for Ms. Smith before we hear from the applicant? Mr. Wright. One question. Uh, at the workshop meeting, we had asked how many bedrooms were in the five current uh, units. Did we get that answer? I did not hear it straight from the applicant. Um, so if Mr. Wright, Roundtree can bring that forward, I would ask Mr. Roundtree. Thank you. Can I, Sean, can I bring that up at the end of the presentation? There's, there's been some details that have kind of arised on this project in the Thank last you. day or so. Uh, my name is Clyde Roundtree. I'm a Huddleston Steel Engineering Chairman Jones, uh, Planning Commissioners. Thank you for the opportunity to present to you 604 North Maple. Um, and I want to just thank the staff. This has been a process that's taken quite some time for us to go through. And um, we've been working for over a year and a half on this. Holly is the, the latest contributor to the process. And I thank you, Holly, for all that you've done. I'd like to start off by first off saying that we're, uh, we're all kind of growing through the CCO. It seems like it's been a process for all of us to kind of understand how that is impacting downtown. And I think um, there's been a lot of opportunities. I think a lot of people are taking advantage of those opportunities and we feel like we're in the same boat. Uh, this was actually one of the first projects when the CCO got approved. So we've really been in the pipeline that long kind of walking through the process. Uh, most, of our, most of our impact and influence from the interaction with planning staff has been regarding the architecture. And um, I'll, I'm going to say this now because I think it will help everyone understand. I, I'm going to ask at the end of my presentation that we go ahead and have the public hearing, but we defer any action tonight. Our client, uh, Carmen Greenberg, her daughter goes to <coughs> Tulane University and uh, they had the hurricane and she's had to mobilize down south for that. And so she apologizes for not being here. She's very passionate about this project. She would really like to help you understand where she comes from and why she'd like to do this. And, um, and also Michael Picklesheimer for personal reasons is not here either. So Sean, there's a lot of questions about architecture that's come up and he could relate those details. So as far as the interior of the building is concerned, Carmen was gonna relay all that, all you know, basically the condition, the status of those, the inside conditions. And then Michael was gonna talk about uh, some of the height issues and how that was gonna work out. And Chairman Jones, I know Mrs. Greenberg talked to you about some of the building facades and that rear facade. Uh, she said that she's more than willing to make adjustments on that to make it more, you know, have a little more personality against that, that residence down um, West Chestnut. So with that in mind, I'd just like to walk you through a few components of the PowerPoint. I do appreciate you all giving me this opportunity. Uh, let's see where we are. As is mentioned, uh, the CCO is definitely not requesting the density or not recommending this, the, I mean the uh, 2035 plan is not recommending this density, but as we've seen with the CCO, um, the density is coming in a lot higher. A lot of people are taking advantage of that opportunity by increasing the density in these areas. The 20.8 units per acre is a little bit deceiving in the fact that it's a smaller lot, but there are five homes on there. There's five potential tenants on that property now. It is a rental property. Uh, Mrs. Greenberg would like it to make it very nice and uh, be a four ownership property. We are surrounded by rental properties and she knows that she's taking a risk by coming into the area and going for a four ownership product. So she's, she's excited about the possibility, but she also is very aware um, that, that it is a transitional area and that the home next to her is a, you know, is a quadplex and the home behind her is a duplex and you know, it's, it's gonna stay rental more than likely unless uh, the same process begins to happen down the street. So let me see if 
where we're at. Is this me, Holly, or is this you? Is this my? Okay. I guess I'm going the wrong direction. As Holly mentioned, um, North Maple is part of the, uh, the Main Street overlay, so we have to be very sensitive about the facade of the buildings as, as well as the sidewalks, streetscape, and lampposts that would be out front. So um, Mrs. Greenberg committed to that process, making sure it has the character and quality that you'd expect along a Main Street. And as far as the, you know, we're utilizing utilities, but I think this area is important to understand. As, as Holly mentioned, Caddy Corner to us is a building that's been upgraded. Uh, I think it's an autism center, I believe. I'm not positive, but they've done a fantastic job, but very contemporary in nature. Uh, Ms. Greenberg saw that building, and our, our original architecture reflected that character of that building because she just loved the, loves the way it looked. But, but after going through the process, we realized that um, the character of the building has to be much more consistent with what we consider the Highland study. And so um, Michael Picklesheimer's worked hard to kind of bring it into that, bring scale elements to the building, bring decor elements, bring details that you would expect more from a row house in an urban setting than something more contemporary. So um, that's the direction we're heading. Just wanna walk you through the adjacent relationships. This, this house on the top corner is a house to the north of our property. Uh, it's a, it is a quadplex, it's all brick, a two-story, full two-story building. The house in the bottom uh, picture is basically a, a modular home of some sort, a one-story building. I'm not sure if it's rental or not, but it's a, basically a modular home. That's basically a, directly across the street from our site. Uh, the house in the middle is the house that we are planning on taking down, uh, the picture in the middle. Uh, that will be the house that will be raised for this project to happen. And then as most mentioned on the bottom right-hand corner of that photograph is that um, the facility that's been upgraded as a commercial business. Uh, the view, the, the item C is, is important because that's West Chestnut Street. That'll be our access road. We have done some research on West Chestnut and we know that that, route is not, that road's not slated to be improved. That was concerned that that road would have to be widened. It's been determined that that road will not be widened in the future. The overall site plan, just wanna walk through that briefly. We are proposing three three bedroom units on the front uh, the front portion of the property against North Maple Street. The, the goal there is, again, to create more of a row house type of look architecturally. Uh, these will have rooftop components to them for outside living. One of the things we ran into with some of the height restrictions is that those rooftops need access points, and the access point is the stair shaft. That projects beyond the roof line, so that projects the overall height of the building a little higher than um, the CCO would recommend. But it's not a living space. It's not a volume that is occupied. It's really an access point. So that was something for clarification. The uh, three units on the front would have rear entry garages, two car garages, which we feel like is really important with the downtown setting is that the CCO is requiring, uh, uh, you know, to minimize the parking requirements, but we feel like we've, ex we've exceeded the parking requirements in terms of providing four spaces for the front units, two cars in the garage, two cars out of the garage. The rear units are two bedroom units with one car garage and one car out. And then we have two guest spaces, which was really um, a part of the staff's strong encouragement, making sure there's some place that guests can be. So there's two guest spaces that basically front the dog park right on the, the back edge of the property. As Holly mentioned, there is a dog park area that's shown in that kind of brownish tan color. And then the, the front is a hardscape patio area that'll have a grill and some patio area that'll be up towards that unit on the front on West Chestnut. I want to bring to your attention that the front facade of the building in the rear, so there's two built, there's three units in the front, there's two units in the back. The rear unit faces West Chestnut at the front. So the garage is basically coming in from the side and then the, the attached unit to the rear corner, basically the front of the house is, is facing the motor court. Uh, Katie was concerned about stormwater concerns and, and so it's all pervious pavers. So that gives it more of a courtyard type of feel, we're excited about using pervious papers that just adds, adds to the architectural character of the overall development. As was mentioned, there are, um, there, there are wing walls that were designed to screen the parking. That seems like a theme that we're really trying to hit on by fronting these buildings, we're asking for a reduced front setback, but by fronting the buildings closer to North Maple Street, it allows us to put all the vehicular traffic behind. That gives you that overall character. If you could imagine these homes going all the way down North Maple, it'd just be beautiful and you wouldn't see any cars outside those parking on the street, uh, parallel parking, but all the, the daily use type of parking would be behind the buildings. We felt like that was important. And also by putting screen walls with some landscaping, we can shield that parking from view along West Chestnut Street. 
As far as overall, the, you know, we're allowed, um, the site has 35% open space, which is over the requirement from the CCO. We are, um, our formal open space is 5% of the sites required for formal open space. We're at 5.4%. Overall lot coverage, we're allowed 50% lot coverage. We're only 32% lot coverage. So we're working within the parameters of the CCO. Uh, we're, we feel like that's well within the jurisdiction of the ordinance. But I think what we're all wrestling with is, is the product at the CCO. Is it a product that we're going to be happy with at the end of the day? And so I think it really does come down to architecture and architectural styling. Uh, we know that these buildings, just based on the nature of the investment, are going to be larger than probably the adjacent homes next to them. But I think when you're asking, well, when, when we're asking for the chance to take away rental property and make it for ownership property, uh, I think we're finding ourselves um, getting into much more expensive construction. So I did go by. I, I, it was interesting because I have not walked through North Maple uh, Town or, or Maple Key Townhomes before, and I walked through them this week. And I walked through, and I and I, I walked through them very objectively to say, okay, you know, there's some issues with scale, there's some issues with color. We're working through that. You know, I know this this planning the planning staff's working through that with the owner, but I was really trying to understand what was done. You know, what was really done here. And, and a, a house was removed that was an older home. What was put back was, was what were townhomes, four townhomes that are, that are top notch. I mean, whether we agree with the aesthetics, that, that's, a, that's another story and we're trying to make that work. But I realized that the quality was never spared. And I think that folks are investing downtown. That's one thing they're not doing. They're not trying to figure out the cheapest way to, to get into these properties. These properties are, are pretty expensive properties. And I have never experienced a rooftop patio before, a rooftop garden or anything like that. This is my first time to walk up there, and it was fantastic. I mean, it was unbelievable. And uh, I encourage anyone to go see it because it's very impressive, the overall layout and the overall quality uh, of that particular development. And I know Carmen uh, would plan on exceeding that. I mean, I think that's just who she is, and that's the character of the buildings that we're designing. So. Uh, it was very informative for me to walk through those and see the quality and uh, see how it responds. And then it's a challenge because in that situation, um, you know, the next house down the street is a literally a house that has, it has tar paper siding on it. I mean, I, I haven't seen a house with tar paper siding in a while, but that's what it has. So, so we're wrestling with that tension that we're all kind of feeling about, you know, these buildings are bigger than we like, they're, they're more prominent. But as we begin to see this process unfold, um, very seldom do we see when that the scale goes down. And I think the other thing that happens on this particular uh, proposition is that because we have the parking requirements that we're trying to exceed, you know, these buildings are coming off the ground. So we're having, you know, the one floor. I mean, Carmen wanted to have some living space down on the first floor because that was important to her. But, but basically the first floor is the garage. So that's immediately putting these things up 10 feet off the ground just because you got to park the cars underneath. So with that in mind, um, I, I would love to talk more about the architecture. I'm excited about the architecture, but there's been so many nuances that have been done related to this project that I would really like to wait for Mr. Picklesheimer to be present to walk you through every detail. I know he's refined them significantly from the original uh, proposition that we proposed, original proposal. I, and I know this is our latest rendition, and I can just, uh, you know, speaking about the facade, just so we can all be, uh, as much as I'm informed, uh, on this particular situation, he's, the details that he's looking to use that be, bring scale to the building and bring a more intimate look are if the doors, you can look at the doors, the doors would have windows, just to give them more personality. The windows would have grids, which give them some scale. There's an awning, a, a permanent kind of awning-like structure over the doors. There are simulations of window boxes on the windows. There's details above the windows that accentuate the window detailing. The, the structure has a stagger. There's a variation of materials. He's trying to use a rail system at the top cornice to, to scale down the building. So uh, everything about the building is trying to create more of an intimate scale to a building that's a, a large building. And on the, uh, this is important to see too because you can see the relationships of how this would apply. In this situation, over on Maple Key, there are all one-story buildings close to it. So it, it does feel very different from the adjacent relationships. In our situation on uh, North Maple, the, because the building next to us, the fourplex, is a two-story building, it, it, it'll fit more in scale, I believe, um, with the context that it's in currently. So this, this image shows how that building to the north actually lines up scale-wise. And the next image, 
that I want to reflect on is it shows the building to the uh, down West Chestnut Street in relationship to our two-story building, our two-bedroom two building in the back. I would bring to your attention just so you understand that the buildings on the front, we do have a, there's a stagger. If you can notice the building in the rear, the two-bedroom building, it already has a step down. And we were trying to basically scale that building down as we approached the cottage house down uh, West Chestnut Street. So Michael's been very sensitive to try to make sure that our scaling is not totally out of proportion to the adjacent relationships. I would venture to say that, uh, you know, houses down West Chestnut are probably prime for the pump as far as redevelopment because they're older, they're all duplexes, and uh, they're not in great shape. But that's speculative thinking, but I, I could see that happening. Overall, we want to do accentuated landscaping on the foundation, again, trying to create that rural house kind of courtyard type of feeling along North Maple, as well as not turn our back on West Chestnut. That's why we're fronting that rear building towards West Chestnut. Having streetscape planting, having foundation planting, having seasonal color, trying to screen the parking are all ambitions that we have with this project. And finally, to mention just the open space, we all have a fenced in dog park area. And that may be necessary downtown because there's not a whole lot of green space associated where dogs can run. So I know we get kind of worn out on dog parks. I, we hear about them all the time. Murfreesboro loves dogs. But they are a way to actually solve a problem that we have in terms of where pets go. And so this this will basically really solve a need that I think the owners will have in this property. And then that front courtyard helps us meet our formal open space requirements, but it's also kind of consistent with the character of the buildings, have more of an intimate kind of patio area associated with this development. So if you have any questions for me, I'd be glad to answer them, but, but I would like to defer action on voting on this, if we could, until uh, Mr. Pickle, Picklesheimer can be here and Mrs. Greenberg can be here. Uh, and I think that Holly, we mentioned the possibility of this, the 13th maybe, September 13th, but we'll see how, how the, that coordinates. But I thank you for giving me the chance to present to you. And uh, again, if you have any questions for me specifically that I can answer, I'll do my best. But a lot of the questions I think you'll have will be more related to Carmen and to uh, Mr. Gr Picklesheimer. Okay, thank you, Mr. Roundtree. Any further questions before we open the public hearing? Okay, seeing none, then we will open the public hearing on this zoning application and ask uh, anyone to come forward that would like to speak on this item. And I don't see anyone else out there, so we will close the public hearing. Ask for any other comments or questions, and then I believe what the applicant is requesting is for us to defer this item until our next meeting. And certainly, if y'all have any, any feedback to give them, if there are any improvements that you would like them to make before the next meeting, um, I think now would be a, an opportune time to let them know about that as well. Okay. I did, for, for the rest of the commission, I did speak to Ms. Greenberg uh, yesterday, I believe, uh, and she was in, you know, uh, down trying to help her daughter and several of them move out at Tulane and um, but I, I the only thing I saw when I kind of looked through was I, I did request that maybe they could make a change on the rear side uh, there's just a vertical um, I'm, I guess it's hardy board on the back um, that I just think if you look at the rest of the project in general and then look at that from the back I, I just so that, that was my only comment to her regarding uh, that. The rest of the project I thought looks very well. Um, I thought it was a very, very nice looking project as far as I was concerned. But I, I did think there was still a little bit of opportunity for improvement on, on the back side. And just for clarification, Chair Jones, is it this particular um, elevation that faces towards the east to that one and a half story building? Yeah. Yes. Yes. So I think uh, these, there's a car uh, parking right behind that section there. And then this is living space, and then there's actually living space behind this one as well. But in the, the, the entire center part of the building is a vertical. Um, that, that's what I was, you know, unless it's just looks, yeah, all, all of that. 
Do you have any concerns about the, the elevation at the top of the screen, which will face the, the interior uh, parking area? I can't, not that I can tell from that image. I think we can, 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 you, can you zoom in on those a little bit, Holly? when you look at the rest of the uh, you know when you look at the rest of the project and then turn around and see that as the back of the building and I know it is still just the back of the building but I just think there's room for improvement back there again just my opinion in my opinion when you compare it to the one on the Maple Key that's a lot bigger piece of property with one less unit on it and so you, you drive down through there and it looks massive even on that piece of property those four units just look massive and we're going to put five units on this piece of property that's a lot smaller that's going to look even more massive uh and only being 14 foot off the right of way in the front on maple street And I'll restate my concern from the workshop, which is still parking. I still think it lacks a few guest parking spaces. And I take it across the top on that building that we were just looking at Is that this one? Does that have the rooftop on it? This does not. So this is the um, the uh, two bedroom unit. So okay. the only um, outside space see, they yes. have are these second floor balconies that mm -hmm. face the inside mm -hmm. parking area, but no rooftops on these back ones. Oh, this is four and five. Yes. Not the back. Okay, then. I agree with the chairwoman because I think you'll be able to see that from Maple, won't you? Driving by. Yeah. So that's where I would think even maybe the the, the top elevation needs some. So this would be Chestnut Street, what you would see. So that building you were just seeing is right here. Mm-hmm. And then their parking is right behind this section. And then here again, the parking is right behind this section being screened by these half walls. And then this is that three units with the rooftops. How big are those balcony patios? These? Like just six by eight, eight by 10? Would... I see the head nodding, yes. Yeah. Michael question but I know his intention was to have them so they could be livable not just token kind of Juliet okay. balconies but they'd have some sort of a I would say at a minimum they're probably five feet but they're probably more like six feet so enough to put a grill and a couple chairs out there it was brought up that was one of our refinements with the planning staff which I thought was fantastic it was you know these folks don't have anything outside so right. the balconies were just a really good suggestion uh, we were able to accommodate that so they can use the formal open spaces down low but that gave them some personal space as well okay The, the balconies on the front. Are you, you're talking about the balconies on the back or the balconies? The balconies on. The, well, they're basically on the front of the rear. rear but buildings. The balconies on the front are just for aesthetics, right? Okay. Yeah. I, I, I'll voice my opinion. I said, I like the architecture. I like the facing, the front facing on it. I mean, I think the architecture, the building itself in the front is very beautiful. Uh, the challenge for me is, is one. The, the rooftop to make sure that we're not going to be over the limit, meaning uh, that fourth, basically fourth floor, fourth floor, and how that's going to feel. But uh, probably the second thing would be it's a lot going on in a small space. Yeah, that's what I. Uh, 
and I know financially, like you said, the, at the workshop, that you know it's a challenge to make it work. But um, I am a proponent of having this type of product downtown. I agree with that. Me as well. I, um, I didn't really get a grasp of this because uh, I don't do well with pictures without seeing a finished product, but. Uh, Mr. Wright brought up a good comparison because I go by uh, the other development that he was comparing this to probably once every two days and it's it's powerful I mean it's a big project especially if especially you get the look coming down Maple or if you're um, uh, coming up Loki it it looks pretty sizable um, and then it looks like in the back of that particular project there's going to be plenty of parking um, just because it's it's open in the back and there's no other buildings behind it uh, so it's that project in itself is I mean when you see it it just comes out at you and if this is more on less space that that that's that's going to be a lot going on i know people have already said that but that's a great comparison that sean brought up i i mean i think on that corner this is going it's going to make a statement uh i think that for me the challenge is going to be I'm okay with it making the statement for the three in the front because I think that's going to be really, really nice. Um, but the one, the ones in the back is the ones that concern me. Um, how we're going to make that look? I'll step in and offer a comment as well. I would, I would agree wholeheartedly that the that the additional two units on the back just feel like an afterthought. That the the how regal this project is going to be is kind of how I see it driving down the street. Uh, everything I said, like I said, is just going to be an afterthought in the back. Um, so I would like to see that taken off if we, if possible. Okay. I'll Any make a motion to defer. Motion to defer. Second. And do we need to specify uh, the time <coughs> limit on that deferral? I, I think if um, if Mr. Roundtree is acceptable, we would just say um, indefinitely. And if and if they feel that they're ready, that they've taken your feedback tonight and and are ready to come back on the fifteenth, then then we can certainly put them on that agenda. But uh, I think we would need. A, uh, an affirmative for Mr. Roundtree that um, to work with us and determine the date and for an indefinite deferral. Can you mind affirming for the record, Mr. Roundtree? For the record, we were excited about working with the, the planning staff to make sure that the recommendations from the commission have been respected. Um, I would like to add just real quick, I think the one thing that I've, because I did go by and I studied Maple Key, Maple Key looks more like an island. That's the way I can describe it. And uh, this won't feel that way. It's hard to describe that something with actually more density could actually feel more intimate. But I think the fact that Maple Key has surface parking, like a large area of surface parking, it creates a lot of separation from anything around it. It just kind of like, it feels like it's just kind of there. And, um, and that was my observation because when you do surface parking, that's 60 feet of just pure concrete behind this building. Our parking is going to be much more integrated with the building, so it's going to feel very different, much more cottage-like than it would kind of, you know, it's, a, it's just a different vibe. So I want you all to kind of understand why you're seeing it the way you're seeing it and why you feel the way you feel. That was my perception because it just feels like it, it is on that corner and it's kind of an island unto itself. I think this will feel more intimate, but we'll get there. But Matthew, uh, definitely more than willing to try to improve the rear building, make that facade nicer. I think Harmon's all over that. I think she mentioned that to Mrs. Jones. And uh, we would be excited about getting together, make sure we can refine it and then get back to planning commission as soon as we can. Thank you very much. Thank you. So we have a motion and a second for deferral for 
indefinite seems <laughs> out there, but uh, we have a motion for deferral. So all in favor, state aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you, Chair Jones. You're welcome, thank you. Okay, next we have staff reports and other business, and we do have one item there. Um, they'll be requesting a motion for a mandatory referral to consider the abandonment of a drainage easement along Pathfinder, Pathfinder Drive. IMER Development is yeah. the applicant, and Mr. Joel Aguilera. Aguilera. <laughs> yes. <is that? laughs> Thank you, Madam Chair. Tell us about this tonight. Welcome back. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here again and be able to talk. Let me scroll. <laughs> See, it's not here. that bad, is it? <laughs> <laughs> I apologize. I'm trying to. No problem. There. Take your time. Show the exhibit for. Uh, okay, perfect. Yes. Again, thank you, Madam Chair and Planning Commission. Um, yeah, tonight the item that I'm bringing here for you all is a mandatory referral for the consideration of abandonment of a 20-foot drainage easement along Pathfinder Drive. This is an existing drainage easement in the Brady Estates subdivision. Uh, this easement was recorded in Section 1 of Brady Estates, but due to a change in the design of the uh, drainage, uh, it was determined that it was no longer needed for this location. Um, the drainage facility has been relocated as well with the construction of Brady Estates Section 2, and the easement will be replaced uh, with the recording of that plat. Uh, the Planning Department uh, Project Engineer Katie Knoll has also reviewed this request and has echoed those findings that the portion of this easement to be abandoned is no longer needed. Um, and so the staff recommends that the Planning Commission uh, recommend approval of this request to the City Council uh, subject to the following conditions that uh, if it is approved by City Council, the applicant will be responsible for providing the information necessary for the legal department to prepare legal instruments for the easement abandonment and that the legal instruments will be subject to the final review and approval of the legal department and that too that the applicant will be responsible for recording these instruments including a repayment of the recording fee. And there's also an exhibit, I believe, as well um, for you to review. And I am here for any questions that you may have. Okay. Any questions regarding this abandonment of the drainage easement? And if not, we will need a motion and definitely subject to all staff comments. I'll make a motion that we approve, subject to all staff comments. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, please state aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Thank you very much. Any other staff reports? Any other business? Just a scheduling reminder that our September 15th meeting will be at 2.30 p.m. instead of 1 p.m. Okay. Thank you very much for that. 2.30. All right, if there is no other business, we stand. We I will be absent for that. Thank you. Just wanted to let you know. Thank okay. you. Thank you. We stand adjourned. Thank you very much.